Yes, I know, darn it! Should I just answer it? But if I did that, Miss Mikun would know I was faking being asleep. Besides, I didn't like talking on the phone. Dude, it's not that serious, my guy. Just answer the phone. I then realized that, without even thinking, I'd looked up. Oh, what the frick? She's just carrying the sword. Oh, yo. Oh. Hello? How's it going, everybody? Hoodlamut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we went on a quest in Shibuya to find a die sword. Uh, because Fess told us when we were at school that the sword would give us salvation. And so, uh, because Takumi's all paranoid and scared of the demon girl, he, he wanted to make sure he would be safe and he thought it was a dumb idea. He thought us, you know, getting a sword. He's like, how's that going to save me and all that? But he's like, screw it. I'm just going to go and try and find one. So he went and tried to, he looked up where to, to buy a di uh, die sword. And uh, then he, he went and got it at some very, very uh, sketchy, you know, uh, kind of antique looking store with uh, a lot of weird stuff in it, to say the least. Uh, aside from that, we also got a, a bangle that came with it, this little, like, uh, like bracelet thing or whatever and uh, we didn't want it but uh our our little sister Donami wanted it so she has it now and um aside from that i think that's pretty much it oh yeah and then also i, I almost forgot uh dr takashina when we went to go uh back to the hospital to you know kind of have like a uh check-in or whatever they call it when you're going back, you know, after so long uh, to the doctors or whatever. Uh, Check-up, excuse me, that's what it is. Um, Dr. Takashina wasn't there. He was sick or something, apparently, and only uh, uh, Hazuki-san was there. So that's interesting, and that makes me more suspicious of Hazuki. But uh, you know what? I guess we'll have to play to find out. So without further ado... Let's just get into this, shall we? The first melt has concluded with results that exceeded our expectations. There are only minor discrepancies between the GE rate increase and our initial calculations. And are our ventures into biorhythm control proceeding smoothly as well? Shibuya's GE rate while it is much higher than those found in other areas, proves to be quite stable. Interesting. Biorhythm? Okay, so that's the route we're going, huh? Okay. Interesting. Therefore, intentionally manipulating it is a simple matter, and forcing a sudden increase in the biorhythms of Shibuya's inhabitants would be equally trivial. Please consult the report containing the results of our experiment. I believe you will find the fruits of our labor to be quite acceptable. <laughs> it's only natural that even scum like you would produce such results. We're supplying you with a large sum of money, and incredible human resources after all. I'm fully aware of how effective it is. The church's followers have multiplied considerably over the past few months alone. The church? What kind of church? To, like, a cult? Oh, this is Nozomi! I just realized I wasn't even looking at any of that. I was I was just reading. What the frick? Oh! So this was, uh... This was the, the organization that that guy that Takumi saw at the hospital when he was younger... Had... Well, and while we were there just, you know, recently... Uh had that, that that badge he had on him although i don't know if he saw the badge this time but at least in the past he said he did he saw nozomi and he didn't know what it meant okay all right so they're trying to seemingly control people whoever this is interesting they're just giving this to us outright you know and with that project noah shall now advance to its next stage are we in agreement what plan do you have in mind for its code samples? 
while you may have obtained the samples of three people, you have yet to reach our quota. Indeed, it will prove most difficult to achieve such numerical values if we do not have five samples at minimum. We are currently gathering sample carriers. After such is achieved, all that remains will be extraction. Then we shall leave it in your hands. May the divine light save you. Continue your proceedings with great caution. Yes, I shall do my utmost. The divine light? What the frick? What is this? Uh, oh, okay, that's it. We're done with that. All right. What the crap? I should probably go to bed. Stifling a yawn, I looked at the clock on my PC. It was 5 a.m. I'd spent another entire day grinding on ESO, but no monsters had ended up dropping the rare items I was looking for. I'd been binging it for about eight hours straight, but still no luck. Meh, that happened to me all the time, though. I glanced over to the side of my computer desk. The die sword I'd bought yesterday was still leaning against it. I had set it there within reach of me so I could grab it at any moment. Speaking of the sword, the darn thing hadn't glowed at all. I'd been hoping that it'd transform into some new, really cool form like the one Senna had. But I'd been similarly out of luck there, too. On my monitor, Grimm's avatar had just leveled up. My Nidhart was already max level, so he wouldn't go any higher. It's probably about time to make a new character. My third after Lisa Lot, I thought to myself as I rubbed my sleepy eyes. EXP sure was something. It was a well-known concept in RPGs, but... I figured EXP existed in real life, too. Back when I'd first started playing ESO, I'd been a total nobody who didn't know right from left. But now, I was known far and wide as the lightning-fast Nidhart, the most powerful player in Baselard. Let's say... The person controlling me had lost a chunk of my EXP for some reason or another. If that happened, then it would make complete sense why I'd forgotten things. That could also be where the discrepancies in my memory had come from. Things like Shogun and the Demon Girl. Well, we already know for a fact that he's being uh, controlled by someone unless that was a delusion. Which I don't think it was, because that would be a weird... Delusion to just show us for no reason unless it's deliberately there to throw us off on purpose. So, I, I don't know. But we do know that that isn't fake, at least. Before a chunk of my EXP got wiped, maybe it was perfectly normal for me, the person controlling me, to post in chat rooms under the handle Shogun. And for me to live like a complete normie with the demon girl. No, that that just wasn't possible. But if it was possible, then maybe I used to possess an incredible power that would allow me to oppose the demon girl. Was I the only person who thought like this? I didn't really feel like it was a particularly weird way of thinking. Human beings could only really make judgments based on their own sense of values that they'd come up with themselves. So maybe it wasn't just me living my day-to-day -day life, making the wrong decisions, but everyone in the entire world. That's pretty narcissistic of you. <laughs> everyone else is the problem, not me, you know? <laughs> That's why everything screwed up. That's why my life got screwed up, because everybody else, you know? It's a pretty common thing, though. I feel like that's, like, oftentimes people won't say it quite so, you know, bluntly that way, you know? So to, going to such an extreme, but... You know, it is common for people to blame literally anyone other than themselves for their own issues, you know. 
It's like, you know, someone did this to me back when I was 12. So that's why at 40, you know, five, I'm still this, you know, crappy jerk of a person or whatever. And it's like, no, eventually you have to grow up and, you know, get past those things that have traumatized you. You know, it's like, you know, you can't just expect people to pity you forever. You know, you'll never grow. You'll never get out of it. You'll never become a better person. You know, you have to take those things that messed you up and become better from it. And so far, Takami hasn't <laughs> learned how to do that yet. But he's 17. We're giving him some time. All right. We're still working with him. Okay. I haven't given up hope quite yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> Back when I was little, I'd gone to the dentist, and I remembered them telling me, You did such a great job putting up with that much pain. You were a very good patient. At the time, I thought I was amazing for making it through to the end, and I felt really proud of myself. Thinking back on it now, though, that comment was probably based on the degree of pain felt compared to the progression of the cavity. But even if the level of pain was the same, there would be people that could bear the pain, and there would be people who couldn't. In other words, I came to realize that how someone recognized and felt such sensations completely depended on the person. Childbirth, for example. I'd often seen on the internet that women could endure the pain of it, but it would be completely impossible for men. Another example would be marathon runners. Maybe they excelled not because of their physical strength, but because of their ability to endure pain. There were also sadists and masochists. If there were people that found pleasure in being hurt, there would also be people that derived pleasure from hurting others. In other words, I believed that the way people felt things, along with their ability to handle pain and suffering, all varied from person to person. Perhaps the level of pain in the toothaches and headaches I got from time to time actually far surpassed the limits of pain an ordinary person could take. And if that were true, then perhaps if I'd passed the same pain on to someone else, the sheer agony would cause them to go into shock and die. The conclusion I ended up coming to as a result of this line of thinking was more or less a self-righteous delusion. That perhaps I was special. Interesting. Special. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Although I denied it, I was sure that every person had delusions like this. Every man longs to be the strongest in the world. Every human being wants to think that they're special. That they're the chosen one. We all want to think that a dramatic story full of twists and turns, like the ones you'd find in TV and movies, is waiting for us in the future. That's kind of crazy. I've actually, I've actually had those types of feelings, and I, I wonder if have any of you guys had those types of things? Because that's, I feel like that's like a universal thing. Honestly, he's saying he feels like it's universal. I think it is too. You know, it's like, I think, I think it's like if nothing else, everybody wants their life to have some kind of a, a, you know, plot progression similar to how movies do and, and TV series, right? Because it's constantly moving forward usually. It's not just monotonous. You know what I mean? There's an inciting incident that happens that sets you on this journey that gets you out of the mundane world that you live in, just going to work every day, coming home, and then rinse and repeat type of mentality, you know what I mean? Or going to school if you're, you know, in that stage of life. Um but I can say, yeah, I've, I've totally had that type of a feeling that it's like, you know, like hoping that something like that would eventually happen. And I think the pitfall that a lot of us can fall into is not taking that into our own hands, but waiting for, you know, God or fate or anything of that type of nature to take the reins and throw the inciting incident into our face. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to go find the inciting incident. Uh, I, I think a lot of people for... I was going to say for better or worse, but really it's often for worse, are the reactive protagonist of their world, or at least they want to be, rather than a proactive protagonist. Um, and oftentimes that's to their detriment. So I like this. this. This interesting philosophy he's going through, even though it's like very, you know, I don't know, what do you want to say, nerdy? I don't know if you call it nerdy, but it's just, it's an interesting way to look at everything, I guess. 
the so-called desire to be a hero. Or, to be blunt, textbook chinibio crap. Of course, even I had those kinds of desires. It could very well be my destiny to triumph over the demon girl. But if that really was my destiny, and I had to make it come true, I'd need a number of conditions to be met first. At the very least, I absolutely needed the ability to use cheats. <laughs> okay. Be it cheat codes for special attacks, or maybe even a god mode of some kind. I didn't want to deal with any pain or fear. Interesting. If I couldn't cheat in some way, or in other words, if I was supposed to achieve that with my own power, there was no way I'd be able to do it. Which was why, if the person controlling me had lost all of my EXP, that would be a huge blow to me. A super effective one. <laughs> okay. I just barely got to school on time. It probably wasn't the best idea to stay up playing Vidya until early in the morning on a school night. I'd had to run in order to make it on time. When I got to the classroom door, I stopped and took deep breaths to try and catch my breath. I couldn't act in a way that'd make me stand out to my classmates. For me, even something like being late would be fatal. If the DQN's eyes all zeroed in on me, my life would be over. That's such a weird way to look to, to, to like think of his life, you know what I mean? Like, what does that mean it would be over? Like, does he think that they'd just start to bully him forever? Because, like, most people would just be like, oh, that's weird, and then they'd move on, you know what I mean? Unless they're just that miserable, you know? Because oftentimes, you know, bullies are just that miserable, so they look for someone pathetic to pick on. So, like, I guess in, in that case, that could could be the case but I don't know it's such like it's such a paranoid way to look at the world I slowly made my way into the classroom keeping my head down I couldn't let myself make eye contact with anyone of course I didn't give a mindless greeting like good morning either trying to make my presence as undetectable as possible I made myself invisible and turned toward my seat. That was how I always did things. And today was no different. I made it to my seat without any issue and sat down. Soon after, I laid my head and arms face down on the desk, and from there, I was safe until homeroom started but I only got to relax for a split second before someone's hand clapped against my back. Miss me? <laughs> Yo, Taku! You've come to school three times this week, haven't you? You're really getting serious now, huh? <laughs> Miss me kun again. Even though he was really getting on my nerves, I'd feel bad if I ignored him, so I started to reluctantly raise my head only to hesitate. Oh, that's interesting. So he actually... It's weird. He has these moments where he's like, yeah, I'd feel bad if I did this. You know what I mean? But in a lot of cases, he's very just like, I don't care. I hope everyone dies and gets, like, brutally murdered. <laughs> Was this Miss Mikun the real one? Two days ago, I'd done what the demon girl told me to do and called him. When I'd talked to him, He'd been very clearly acting strange. I mean, he'd told me that Demi was our classmate, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world, which I hadn't expected at all. Maybe the demon girl had brainwashed him. Or maybe it was something else. Maybe the person controlling him had been switched out. Uh, hello? <laughs> you out cold already? Oh, 
An electronic sound suddenly rang throughout the classroom. I felt a faint vibration near my chest. It was my cell phone. Crap! Now, of all times? What kind of jerk would call me at a time like this? And not only was my phone going off, but even though I was sure I'd set it to vibrate, the ringtone was going off too. I guess I must have messed up the settings. Oh, Taku, your phone's ringing. Yes, I know, darn it! Should I just answer it? But if I did that, Miss Mikun would know I was faking being asleep. Besides, I didn't like talking on the phone. Dude, it's not that serious, my guy. Just answer the phone. But also, if I didn't pick up, it would annoy the rest of the class. And considering how it was ringing loudly throughout the classroom, it had to be doing that already. I wasn't supposed to stand out. This was really, really bad. Hello? You're not gonna pick up? Are you actually asleep? <laughs> Darn it! While I'd been freaking out over what to do, I'd already lost my chance. I couldn't move now. <laughs> the sound and vibration stopped. The call must have gone to voicemail. I let out a sigh of relief soft enough that Miss Mikun wouldn't be able to hear it. It was definitely the right call for me to have figured out how to use the voicemail function. Hey, Taku! Who was that on the other end, hmm? Don't tell me. Was it a chick? Was it the glasses chick that you went home with not too long ago? I'm right, aren't I? Darn it, you're so annoying. I just wanted him to stop bothering me. That phone call had already made me stand out way too much. Had Miss Mikun always been this persistent? Though he had always been way too friendly with me, I thought he at least had the capacity to take a hit. Oh, come on. Knock it off already. I heard a voice from right next to Miss Mikun. Uh-oh, it's Devi, isn't it? Leave him be, Daichin. He seems really tired for some reason, so just lay off for today. She was here in my classroom, like it was the most normal thing in the world. Oh, come on, he was probably just gaming for way too long last night. You're way too soft on him. You're just mad because I'm not nice to you. And why would I, considering how you act around women? You're the enemy of all of us, I swear. <laughs> they were having a friendly conversation like it was the most normal thing in the world. She was blending in like it was the most normal thing in the world. I was too scared to look up. I didn't want to acknowledge that she was there. Meh, even if you aren't the nicest to me, I've got loads of chicks that'll sub in for you. So ha! <laughs> Are you serious right now? I've been telling you over and over that you should stop saying things like that. Your girlfriend's gonna cry if she hears you. Not that I know who your current girlfriend is. <laughs> oh, there's the bell. Here comes the teacher. Had the demon girl really been my classmate all along? No. There was no way. She hadn't been here two days ago. Or, or at the very least, the only person that would spoken to me that day was Miss Mikun. I hadn't gone to school yesterday, so I wasn't sure about that one. But when I came today, she was here. How? How had she managed to worm her way in? <laughs> Everyone took their seats once the sound of the bell announced the start of homeroom. Sensing that, I looked up cautiously. I surveyed the room with just my eyes. I wanted the voice from earlier to have been just an illusion. In order to prove that to myself, I needed to make sure that the girl was nowhere to be found in the classroom. 
I didn't see her. I didn't see anything that even remotely resembled her. Did that mean she really was a hallucination? My seat was in the fifth row from the front. There were nine rows in total. She wasn't in any of the rows in front of me. Which meant... She was behind me? But I couldn't turn around. I couldn't allow myself to stand out. Darn it! This was so frustrating! Was she really here in my classroom or not? I didn't feel chills on the back of my neck. No one was looking at me. I didn't feel a gaze. Was she here? Or not here? Which was it? Still staring at the surface of the desk, I tried to detect her by just her presence alone. Right as I tried, I heard my homeroom teacher enter the classroom. I didn't remember the teacher's name. I had a feeling that it was Sakaji, or Sakata, or at least something like that. He was a PE teacher that graduated from an athletic college, and he was a total musclehead. However, he didn't really act like it, nor did he employ corporal punishment like one might expect him to. If anything, he was the type of teacher that knew how to take a joke. For some reason, the class all started murmuring about something. But right now, I was occupied with trying to detect the demon girl. <laughs> Did I really expect to be able to sense her by presence alone? This wasn't some manga! Was I an idiot? Alright, listen up everyone. From today onward, we've got a new transfer student. My homeroom teacher mumbled that to the class. Oh, so that was why the room was so noisy. <laughs> Go on, Orihara. Give everyone a nice hello. Oh, it's Orihara! Right! Uh, what was her name? Um, uh, Konoe, I think? I think that was the name that the game, like, was, like, that was her last name, right? I didn't hear the supposed transfer student say anything. Was there really one here? I glanced toward the door. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Well, uh, learn my lesson. Ain't I ain't pressing the green button for nothing. Not tricking me again. I don't give a frick. So, uh, yeah, we're going to stay neutral on this one because I don't see any reason to, to, to click the red button. So, and sure enough... There was someone there. She was extremely petite, possibly even more so than Nanami. She looked fairly timid, emulating that Moe gets bullied all the time archetype. If I had to choose, she was probably around mid tier when it came to 3D girls. For some reason, she was looking down at the floor, her eyes filled with tears. Okay. The scattered whispers grew to murmurs as the transfer student maintained her silence. So, in order to comfort her, the teacher placed his hand on her shoulder. Oh, <laughs> looks like she's a little nervous. All right, I'll take you off the hot seat. This is Orihara Kozue, everyone. I hope you will all welcome her as a new member of the class. Oh yeah, it was Kozue. That's what it was, not Konoe. Yeah, Kozue. Okay. Orihara, your desk is over there, in the back. Go ahead and take a seat. <laughs> the transfer student made her way to the back without saying a word, keeping her head low to the ground. Okay. Her seat was four rows behind mine. Should I pretend to watch her so I could catch a glimpse of the people behind me? Problem was, that'd draw a lot of unwanted attention to myself. I didn't want any DQNs trying to pick a fight. All, don't go staring at her just because she's cute or some BS like that. I was at a loss for what to do. Should I look now 
or should I wait until class is over? My head still firmly pressed against my desk. I squeezed my fists tightly. Forget it. I was a coward. Just the thought that, if I turned around, my eyes would meet with that girl's, sent shivers down my spine. You're... like me. The transfer student walked right by my seat. Taken aback, I glanced at her face. What? Oh no, they're all in on it, dude. They all understand. Fess? Uh, Kozue? Senna? Oh my gosh, they all, they all like, understand what's going on. Oh, what the heck? Huh? I then realized that, without even thinking, I'd looked up. Oh, what the frick? She's just carrying the sword. Oh, yo. What the frick? Okay. She's just carrying the sword around, but no one sees it, obviously. Oh, my gosh. What in the world? The transfer student stopped at my desk, if only for a split second. But she didn't look at me. In that moment, however, I saw that she was carrying what looked like an enormous slab of raw iron. Oh. What? The heck? It's just gone. What the frick? But when I blinked, the slab of iron was gone. What was that just now? Was my mind playing tricks on me? I'm so happy we're in the same class. That was all she said. The transfer student then resumed walking, leaving my desk behind. Had she been... talking to me? Why had she talked to me out of nowhere like that? I was like her? She was happy we were in the same class? Did we know each other? No, definitely not. I'd never seen her before. Unless she meant to tell me she was some childhood friend who I'd completely forgotten about until now. Yeah, no. That only happened in Edoge. Was I actually becoming popular after all? Or maybe... Could the transfer student be one of the demon girl's underlings? If so, then the demon's net was closing around me even tighter. I was running out of places to hide. Uh, okay. What the frick? All my new fears and doubts zoomed through my mind at a million kilometers an hour. And before I knew it, homeroom had ended. First period would begin in about five minutes. Miss Mikun rushed over to the transfer student's desk. Knowing him, he was going to try to lay the moves on her. The other students were clearly interested in her too, and the room had grown louder than usual. At a glance, it may have seemed like a casual, peaceful, ordinary thing. But for me, it was like being caught deep within enemy territory. My heartbeat was going crazy. Anxiety filled my head to bursting, and so much as lifting a finger felt like more than a one-man job. My brain was in the midst of a civil war, one side urging me to turn around, the other side warning me not to. Taku! <laughs> my breath caught in my throat. My mind went completely blank. A voice had come from directly behind me. She really was here. That girl really was here after all. You don't look so good. Are you feeling okay? I needed to run. I needed to run away as fast as I could. Despite that, my legs were shaking so violently that I didn't think I could even stand. And while I was frozen solid, the demon girl, Sakihara Dimi, circled around to the front of my seat. <laughs> huh? 
You're covered in sweat. You're not sick, are you? Just like two days ago, she spoke as if she were concerned about me. Just like two days ago, she held out her floral-scented handkerchief. I didn't accept the handkerchief, hurriedly wiping the sweat from my forehead on my own. I... Hmm? Why what? I couldn't look her in the eye, but from how she spoke, I could tell she had a smile on her face. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask, what exactly did she say to you? Demi crouched down, resting her chin on her hands. Now at eye level with me, she peered at my face. I quickly looked away. It felt like the anxiety would tear my heart right open at any moment. Darn it! Why wouldn't she just let me go? Someone, please, help me! I'm real curious. What was she talking about? Who was she asking me about? The transfer student. Oh, she's reading his mind. When she walked past you, she said something under her breath. But all I heard was psst, psst, psst. <laughs> Do you two know each other? Demi was still smiling. Was it just me? Or was her tone more of a, of a probing one than an actually curious one? I thought you weren't into real girls. But is that really true? Where was she going with this? Was her plan to probe me for personal information and then exploit it for her own gain? At the end of the day, I really didn't give a crap about 3D girls. Just like I always said in that sour voice of mine. In that case... Are you into... Me? <laughs> <laughs> An icy chill ran down my back. Despite having just wiped the sweat off my forehead, I could feel moisture all over it. Was that... a threat? Or could it be that she was inviting me to become her ally? Or maybe she intended to seduce me, acting all moe so she could lure me into a trap? All sorts of alarm bells were going off in my head. I shouldn't be talking to the demon girl anymore. If I did, I'd be signing my own death warrant. <laughs> what? Taku? I'd hit my breaking point. In a panic, I stood up and dashed for the exit, knocking into several desks on my way out. <laughs> He's losing it. What is going on? It's like we're in another dimension. Oh, yeah. I ran straight up the stairs without looking at anyone and came out on the empty roof. Yeah, it's the roof trope. <laughs> it didn't seem like she'd chased me. Even so, I couldn't allow myself to relax just yet. So I hugged my knees and decided to hide for a little while in the shadows. My knees were trembling. I couldn't believe that I'd managed to run in this condition. I guess it just showed how desperate I was. <laughs> I was tired of this reality. The die sword I'd gone out of my way to buy hadn't been useful in the slightest. I obviously couldn't bring it to school with how much it'd stand out either. I'd been careless. Two days ago, when Miss Mikund told me that Dimi was our classmate, I'd figured that he was either spewing some bullcrap or just outright deluding himself. But she really was my classmate. O or at the very least, she had become one. There was no point in trying to figure out how she'd managed to worm her way in. She was a demon. She could do things that humans were incapable of with ease. 
Maybe she'd brainwashed my whole class. Or maybe she'd brainwashed all the teachers instead. I couldn't go to the hospital anymore. And now I couldn't go to school either. Meanwhile, Yua was at At Cafe, and Shogun always appeared online. The demon girl and her underlings were no doubt getting closer and closer to me, continually hitting me with psychological attack after psychological attack as they did it. Okay, so I haven't been saying anything a whole lot because I'm trying to, like, piece together what's going on, but I, it just seems like he's going back and forth between two different realities. You know what I mean? And then now it's making us think which one's a delusion and which one isn't. Or are they both a delusion? You know? Or maybe they're both reality in some way. Maybe a little bit of it's reality and a little bit of it's delusion in both cases. I don't know. I just, I literally don't know what to think about this. So I, I don't have a whole lot to say because of it. And I'm not given enough co uh, contextual clues uh, um, for, you know... Uh, Kozue or, or anything to be able to make a comment on her. It's just I don't have enough information right now. Maybe I shouldn't leave my base at all anymore. There were enemies and danger at every turn in reality. They had disturbed me and threatened my peace. Even though all I wanted was to live a quiet life, bothering nobody and being bothered by nobody. I looked up at the blue sky. It floated calmly above me as the wind blew white clouds across its breadth. How nice would it be if I could become one of those clouds? Okay. Around three hours had passed. I had stayed in the same place the entire time without moving. I didn't sense anyone else coming up at the moment. I could finally breathe. The problem, however, was what came after. During break, there would always be students that'd come up here to eat lunch. That was why the best way out of this was to escape during fourth period and make a break for my base. It'd mess up my minimum attendance chart, but I didn't possess even a single ounce of courage that allow me to return to the classroom where the demon girl was. I decided not to worry about the fact that I'd left my bag in the classroom. All I had in there were textbooks. My wallet, my keys, and anything else important would be in my uniform pockets. I hoped. Yeah, but they're going to want to return the bag to him, right? So that you just gave them a reason to come visit you again. Growing slightly nervous, I searched my pockets. Wallet? Keys? Cell phone? They were all there. That was when I remembered that someone had called me. I had been pretty freaked out at the time, but not as much as when Themi had talked to me. Who the heck called me? I couldn't think of anyone who'd call besides my family. It would make the most sense if it was Nanami. She never thought about whether she might be bothering me after all. The only other people who'd know this number would be... Oh wait, that's right. I'd given it to those detectives. If it'd been one of them, I really should have picked up. They still hadn't sent the officers to my base like they said they would so I really needed to talk to them to make sure that that was still happening. The caller's phone number was displayed on the screen. It didn't seem to be Nanami's, and when I looked closer, I saw that I had a new voicemail. I had the vague feeling that I'd seen this number before. Just in case, I checked the call history. Was it the same one that called him while he was at At Cafe? Because if so, then who is this? Okay. Oh! I have a choice. There were only five calls on the list. Uh, I don't know what this would mean. Dude, okay, freaking, if I hit the green button, is he gonna call a number and then they'll be like, this is your hot sex 
operator on the line and it's going to be like a phone sex caller or something that he's going to have a delusion of uh, if they do that does that mean i literally can never press the green button because this is a this is a scenario where there's no girl i could easily press the green button and probably be okay right i'm doing it i'm gonna try it all right and this one you can't fault me for this one okay because there's no girl present all right so i should be fine everything should be fine Right? <laughs> I, because I'm hoping this will urge him to call the number back. That's what I want him to do. So that's why I clicked it. So that's what we're hoping is going to happen. Which meant that since I'd bought the cell phone, I'd only received five calls, three of which were from Nanami. That left two others. The one from earlier today and the one from five days ago were shown as numbers instead of names, as they hadn't been registered in my address book. They were both from the same number, 03X733X991. Considering they had gone out of their way to leave a message, it was probably someone who really wanted to tell me something. All right, answer it. Listen to the voicemail. Ooh! Okay. What did that do? Guess I'd go ahead and listen to it. Oh. Uh, um. It's me. It's not like I called you just because I wanted to hear your voice or anything like that, okay? I was just free and didn't have anything else to do, so I just felt like it. Got it? Uh, okay. <laughs> is this a tsundere call? What is going on? But, now that we're in different classes and all, we don't really get to talk all that often. Is this you? So, I was wondering, what do you think of me? Like, have you ever thought about confessing to me? Oh, b but it's not like it'd make me happy or something if you did that. And besides, the chances of me saying yes are like one in a million. But don't you think that nothing will ever happen unless you at least try and make a move? So, so just grow up here and tell me already, got it? Uh, all right. I'll be waiting for you under the Tree of Legends after school. <laughs> You'd better hurry up and come quickly. Don't blame me for what happens if you don't. <laughs> what the frick? Was that actually meant for him? Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> I mean, it could happen. JK. I freaking wish, though, Lamau. Oh my gosh, really? I don't know what these delusions mean, you know? It's like, they never really, they're always just like, he comes out of them and it's just like, oh yeah, just another delusion. So it doesn't really feel like it has any implications, so I don't know, did that mean anything? I don't know. What the frick, man? Okay. At least he answered it, that's all I wanted him to do. I just wanted him to see what the voice message said. There was no Tree of Legends or whatever the heck at this school. Lol, 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 lol. <laughs> And who was this Sundere supposed to be anyway, Lamau? Her personality settings were pretty lackluster. I should have at least made her more like Seratan. This wasn't the time to be indulging my delusions, was it? Feeling empty inside, I sighed and decided to listen to the actual voice message. <laughs> okay. I examined my surroundings making sure the demon girl wasn't there, then put the phone up to my ear. Welcome to the voicemail service center. You have one new message. First voicemail, Friday, October 17th, 8.28 a.m. Oh. Uh. Hello? the heck's this? 
instead of someone's voice, there was an incredibly familiar melody. It felt like the sound was being recorded from a short distance away from the phone. Maybe the person on the other end was near a pedestrian signal. The song being played was one you'd hear pretty often at crosswalks. It was used in order to let people with visual disabilities know when it was okay to cross. The song was a nursery rhyme called You May Pass, also known as Torianse. While there were a lot of people that knew the melody, there weren't many who knew the lyrics. Oh, and I was one of them, actually. I'd memorized them back in middle school. Then again, it wasn't like I remembered them perfectly now. Okay. You may pass, you may pass. Where shall this narrow path take us to? It is the path to Tenjin Shrine. Please, oh please, will you let us pass? Those with no business will not be let through to celebrate the seven years of this child's birth. We have come with an offering. Going may prove easy, but returning is... What? But returning is wee-oo, wee-oo was what I'd heard from the phone. It sounded like an ambulance, which felt kind of like a bad omen. Eh, it likely didn't actually mean anything, but it still made me feel pretty creeped out. Okay. Ew! Ah! The second after the traffic signal melody got cut off, an extremely loud noise that sounded like a buzzer exploded from the speakers. It was so ridiculously loud that I'd automatically shot the phone away from my ear. W what the heck? When I cautiously brought the phone back to my ear, the voicemail had already stopped playing. What was that? Right at the end there, I thought I'd just barely heard a roaring noise. It sounded like the ground itself was rumbling. That buzzer sound was completely separate from the pedestrian signal melody. Considering how loud it'd been, the only thing I could think of was that the phone's receiver had deliberately been put up next to whatever had made that noise. W was that a prank? My heart began to pound. Had I done something to make someone hate me enough to do that? I don't know what that means. Gosh dang it, that's gonna it's like a cryptic message that we're gonna figure out later, isn't it? I don't understand. Who'd even call me in the first place? I could call them back by dialing the number displayed on my phone, but there was no way I'd be able to call back a prank caller. In the end, all I could do was just leave it. Besides, I was stuck in the middle of a situation far worse than any prank call. I returned my phone to my pocket and ever so carefully left the school, making sure to pay close attention to my surroundings as I escaped. So there was only that one then, huh? <laughs>